What happens when lonely retirees meet cash-strapped university students? We find out today as we stop by two unique communities in northern Taiwan. The proposition is this. Young adults can enjoy a spacious home at a discount. In return, they share their space and time with senior citizens who often crave a meaningful connection. There's not always harmony in the house, but co-living has proven to be a rewarding arrangement for both young and old. She's strapped in gear from head to toe, wearing witted anklets and a hunchback simulator. Earplugs block her hearing, and safety goggles blur her vision. All this is meant to give this university student a glimpse into the experience of being old. Liao Wenzi is a senior at Chinese Culture University. Last year, she joined a co-living program that brings seniors and young adults together at Taipei Yangming Senior Citizens Housing. Her monthly rent is only 3,000 NT, but she also needs to contribute 20 hours of her time to the community. This is 72-year-old Xie Anna. A little over three years ago, her son arranged for her to move into Yangming so that she wouldn't have to live alone. Here, she and her young housemates became fast friends. The students and I have very enthusiastic chats. Often we start talking and end up chatting for more than two hours. I often remind them on this point. Your character determines your destiny. Absolutely don't approach anything with negativity. Have a positive mindset. Push away the clouds and see the sun. At this home, the young share their company and the old share their wisdom. Ever since the college kids moved in, there's been a distinct change in the atmosphere. Some of the activities really get the seniors going. They sing and have fun. The rhythm is laid back. They have fun and they are quite happy. The time passes a bit quicker. The building they live in is owned by the Taipei city government. A private company had been contracted to run a nursing home. When the nursing home launched the co-living pilot program, it was a welcome surprise to the residents. The young adults lead exercise classes that are extremely popular among the residents. Professionals are brought in to teach the students how to teach and how to engage productively with the seniors. For example, the grandpas and grandmas really enjoy physical fitness and muscle training. The students want to lead the classes, but they don't know how. We have fitness instructors to teach them how to help the elderly with some exercises that are moderate and appropriate for them. And the seniors are really supportive of their teachers during the classes. The students share meals with the elderly residents. They have plenty of time to converse, though some topics are best avoided. Young people aren't as good at finding the right topics to discuss. Sometimes they unintentionally cause sorrow for the elderly. The seniors might start crying in the middle of a conversation, or lose control, or be filled with grief. Faced with this, the young people panic and are unsure of how to handle the situation. At times like these, social workers need to quickly step in. Yang Ming later held classes to teach students how to engage with the seniors without eliciting pain. The students learned to be more patient, and the seniors increasingly opened up their hearts. I feel that the grandpas and grandmas here do have this sense that they are alone. I feel that companionship is really a very important thing for them. Co-living programs of different types have taken off in many countries, including Japan and the U.S. In Taiwan, there's the program at Yangming. There's also an experimental program in New Taipei's Sanxia district called Long'an. <laughs> These three housemates converse often, and they chat easily like their family. Aunt Peggy is a retiree who volunteers at Yingge Ceramics Museum. Uncle Shan Sun works the night shift as a security guard. Along is a graduate student at National Taipei University. Peggy and Along are nearly 50 years apart. They spend many a day in the living room. One works on a puzzle, the other studies and works on a report. 
Unlike the living arrangement at Yangming, this program in Sanxia doesn't require young adults to volunteer a set number of hours. There are no requirements on how much the students have to interact with their housemates. I feel the biggest reason Peggy and I can keep living together is that we continue to be ourselves. Whatever our lifestyle was like before, we continue with that lifestyle. However, within that lifestyle, we also gained each other's companionship and engagement. I think the essence of this program is that it creates housemate relationships. These are not relationships between a caregiver and a charge. We want to debunk the stereotypes that people may have about co-living programs for the young and old. Program residents come up with agreements on their own about things like how bills are paid and when shared spaces can be used. What makes the living arrangement work is respect and communication. For example, when it comes to the shelves in the fridge, we decide which shelves are yours, what shelves are mine, what shelves are his. When we have leftovers, we share with each other. That's no problem. Sometimes I think to myself, it's not a generational gap, but rather just differences between housemates. This program is about encouraging tolerance of differences. As Taiwan society ages and its young people struggle to save money, the issue of co-living arrangements will only become more relevant. Whether these two programs are sustainable remains to be seen, but so far they seem to be working. In the coming years, more diverse forms of co-living are likely to emerge.